This program on WTIU is made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. centuries, African-American churches have served as a means of inspiration and hope, which emphasize the meaning of individual transformation. Even when the prevailing notions of the country didn't advocate for fair treatment of African-Americans, black theologies discussed the liberation of the marginalized and the injustices visited upon blacks in America. The late Charles Lincoln, a Duke University professor and a leading scholar in the black religion, argued that blacks brought their religion with them from Africa, and that later in his words, they accepted the white man's religion, and they haven't always practiced it the white man's way. In the late 1700s, blacks worshipped in the same building with whites, but separately, many times in the balcony of the church or wherever they could congregate. As long as there were people, there was church. When you enter someone's home uh, and gathered at the table, uh, communion was every time you do this, do this in remembrance of me, the actual uh, partaking and, and, and choosing to worship no matter where you are is a part of the freedom that, that, we, uh, that we claim. Even though slavery was a dominant force or the controlling force in their lives, that through singing they could be transported beyond that immediate in experience into uh, a realm that allowed them to envision themselves as free. They did not simply acquiesce or uh, adapt Christianity without incorporating their own sense of what Christianity meant. Because many enslaved African Americans were barred from formal education, they used spirituals to communicate with one another. For example, a spiritual like Swing Low, Sweet Chariot was used along the Underground Railroad to help transport people out of bondage to the north. The music could be used as a, a way of communicating among uh, other slaves. For example, the, the time or the place for a slave to run away to get away from the plantation, to remove themselves from the slavery and bondage. There is one spiritual, uh, run, Mary, run, I say, you've got a right to the tree of life that fits into that category. Uh, tonight is the night where you need to steal away, where you need to get away and there will be assistance for you to help you to move out of, of this context to find a better life, to find a better way. It became the black man's purpose to shape, fashion, and recreate the religion offered to him by the Christian slave master and remold it. Through the early Civil War, Jim Crow laws, and civil rights movements, blacks depended on leaders and their spirituality to find inspiration in stories of deliverance. Blacks chose to remove themselves from that context so that they could be free to define who they were and define their own relationship to God, their own relationship to each other without the political and social encumbrances that they were experiencing when they initially were seeking to worship with whites. That continues to be sustained today. 
Many traditions continue in the black church today, but many of the same spiritual traditions have lived in the black church for centuries. So the spiritual became a way that African Americans could talk about who they were, talk about who they could be despite what their particular circumstances were. The musical expression of the spirituals was one way of articulating that. The freedom to step out into the aisle, you know, and to, to turn, to raise your hands and, and literally lift for heaven, you know, to shout with the highest uh, peaks of your voice and not have anyone judge you or point the finger and say, does it really take all of that? Because a lot of times, yes, it takes just that to really be as, as true and as free as you need to be. And this is the place and those Sunday morning celebrations are definitely the, the time. It's about being a part of a community, about being in a place that's safe, about sharing with other people who understand the kinds of things that you are confronting on a daily basis, not because of your educational level, not because of the way that you talk, but simply because of who you are as a person of African descent in these United States. So in that safe place on a Sunday morning, you don't have to explain that to the person that's sitting there next to you. You don't have to explain. If you feel like crying, it's all right because the person next to you probably feels like crying a lot of times himself or herself as well. The church has helped African Americans survive generations of hardship, whether encouragement through difficult financial times, a glimpse of reassurance through trials, or even how communities like Muncie, Indiana, where an estimated 23 percent of families live below the poverty line. Community members find energy and spirit through God's Word. A project started by John Strauss more than two years ago focused on the center of faith during the economic downturn. We visited one black congregation and met the people of Union Missionary Baptist Church in Muncie. Thank you, God, by responding to your graciousness in the way that you prescribed in your word. Thanks, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our whole Christian religion, our whole personal experience of faith has taught us that no matter what we're seeing around us, we trust God. And so, uh, so it's just really a word of encouragement to keep doing what we've always done. And that is we manage our fear with strong and profound biblical faith. Music is very powerful in that it speaks to the soul and the heart of man. We are accustomed to tough times, and we are certainly accustomed to encouraging one another to keep the faith. And, uh, and they know how to encourage and, and, and help people to have hope and dreams and peace in the midst of. WTIU commissioned a panel of members of the clergy and religious scholars to discuss the history of the church and its way forward. The panel will focus on various aspects of the African American worship experience. Several themes such as the personal experience, giving back to the community, of course, and also the teaching of religious texts and the music. Ah, the music. One of the most important parts of the entire worship experience.
thank you all for being here. And Mr. Strauss, you conducted a, a mini film project relating to faith and hope, uh, which are obviously vital elements in the black church experience. Can you just talk to us a little bit about that experience and perhaps how it has or if it has not differed in that particular part? I was struck by the incredible spirit and, and strength of community that I saw. And so um, about two and a half years ago, I started a project on uh, the response of the African-American faith community to the economic crisis. And I was struck by how the community derives strength from the weekly services. Let's just talk a little bit about faith, specifically what faith is in the black church. And I'd like to start with Reverend LeFou. Well, let's just go ahead and take the jacket off. <laughs> um, I think that the, uh, the black church is one of the few places where people can truly still be who they are. And they don't have to put any masks on. They don't have to worry about the person next to them or behind them or what someone's going to say. If you desire to worship in spirit and truth, the opportunity is there. Uh, and, and God is waiting, and, and everybody else is ready to celebrate with you. Can you talk a little bit about the worship experience? When you say that, what, what does that mean, specifically in the black church? If someone were to come from, from a, a far, far away planet and, and come to an African American worship experience, I would tell you, them that it, it is resiliently African. It is something that... Uh, we as a people have, have embraced and made our own, even if the structure itself wasn't of our creation, we've made it an expression of ourselves. Well, there's a variety of expressions. You have some people who are very demonstrative, mm. while you may have others who will be still, mm. but a tear will roll down their face that lets you know I'm feeling right. it too, and it's okay. So you know, we have a variety, uh, but you can be in a congregation where most of the people are animated, but still, everybody's worshiping together, even the person who's sitting still, mm -hmm. and it's okay. Worship comes in many forms. Whether spirituals or gospel music, it defines and depicts African Americans historically and culturally. One might define the worship experience as one that is free. Blacks are a very rhythmic culture, but the music existed even before there were instruments. The percussive heartbeat of the culture is symbolized by the drum. Blacks used their bodies to enhance music, whether by stomping their feet, patting their leg, clapping their hands, or using their voices. Music has a way of reaching the heart. It will touch you and, it, and get to the core of whatever's going on with you. And as Pastor White was saying, I think that what I've observed as an outsider and then a volunteer for the past uh, two and a half years uh, is this idea that uh, one person can get up and run around the church and mm -hmm. another person can be uh, feeling it just as it's, it's their expression. And, uh, and it's incredibly moving to come from another faith tradition and see that because I know that many people... Uh, who I know who are Caucasian had never seen that. I, I'd like to, to, to build on that. I mean, I, I, growing up in, in Cincinnati, uh, I went to the, the oldest African Methodist Episcopal Church in the city. And so it was a very staid type of worship. Mm -hmm. The first time I heard anybody shout in church was in Nashville, Tennessee. I was going to, uh, uh, it was an undergrad at the time at an, at an AME church. I'm African Methodist too. And, 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 and it was the first time I'd, 
seen people act like that in church. Uh, we were used to getting in on time and going out on time, you know. Uh, uh, and so it, 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 it does. I mean, I, I think that, that we do have to, we have to acknowledge mm -hmm. that, that variety. I think one of the things that, that, is, that, is, that the, the black church, if we can use that term, is really struggling with nowadays is this whole notion that, you know, if you're not praising, you're not worshiping. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, so we have this whole movement of praise songs and these kind of things. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right. But I would like to see a lot more variety, mm -hmm. as, as, as my sister talked about, in our, in our worship experiences, because people come at different points and different levels. And, mm -hmm. you know, everybody can't be kind of, you know, tied into just one way of wanting to worship. We are a rhythmic people. We hear music, we're going to move. You see people sitting in their cars. <laughs> you might catch me clapping every night, sitting at the light. Somebody had to blow the horn. We're, we're rhythmic. We like to move. And we have a tendency to want to move together when we're singing in church. And, but don't be delusioned. There are some of us who missed it somehow. <laughs> That some of us don't have the rhythm that everybody thinks we all got. <laughs> <laughs>The church focuses on expressions of freedom and equality, exploring various means of spirituality, rituals, power, and leadership in the black church rests on God's authority. The belief that God will deliver the oppressed through deliverance of his righteousness, the way that one expresses themselves and gives them strength to carry on from Sunday to Sunday. God is good. <laughs> amen, amen. And I, I think that that's one of the, you know, it's one of, it's one of the foundational principles of, 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 of what we do and why we do it too, because black folk know that God is good. All the time. Um, whether your grandmama told you, whether your granddaddy told you, whether your mama beat it into you, making you go to Sunday school every Sunday, or whether you found out for yourself, God is good. And so when it comes to these very difficult decisions in the life of the church, whether it's Baptist, Methodist, you know, Church of God in Christ, whatever the case may be, you have to trust that God has always got uh, the church in mind. That no matter who's sitting at the pulpit, no matter who's got the big piece of chicken, no matter who's got the great <laughs> idea, God is still good. Faith is the substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things not seen. And, it's, and that makes it personal for an individual. And at the same time, it's just as powerful for the collective body that you have faith. It's, it's a, this bond you create that, that, doesn't, that doesn't go away, you know. Um, you know it, and, and so whether you're physically together or, or you're apart, there's a sense of, of, of relationship you've developed. You're going to laugh. You're going to cry. You're going to hear the song that you needed to hear. Through prayer, someone is going to speak directly into your life. The word is going to step on your toes. But in some way, whether large or small, you're going to experience God. One of the struggles within the black church today is finding a balance to close a generational gap. Today's urban black churches still retain some features of a historical rural black church. At the same time, pastors realize they must work to integrate past principles of black theology with themes aimed at empowering the community. A long time ago, the pastor might have been the only or the central educated person in the community. The church was the only place we were welcome to go and, you know, sit together and, and hear a message or get in instructions. 
So you, that has changed over the years. You know, once we got past segregation, you know, people were able to spread out. And so that's it's a good thing and maybe not a good thing, you know, because it has divided us on many levels. We keep coming back to the people, mm -hmm. other people within the congregations. And it's not just the, the church leadership and the pastor, but the pastor having tools within the congregation to help to guide people. We have separated generations in the life of the church so that young kids are no longer sitting on the same pew with, with, with grandfathers and, and grandmothers. And so we've got a, a, such a, a great divide that it continues to expand. And we, until we bring uh, uh, or develop ministries that bring these generations back together, we've got a whole lot of learning that's not, that's not taking place. Mm -hmm. Teach our children how to be patient. You know, how many of our young men know how to tie a tie? You know, how many of our young women are learning how to cook? How many young mothers have never, you know, put a pin on a diaper or even know what a, a real cloth diaper is? <laughs> these, these are teaching moments, you know, that will be lost and will continue to be lost if we don't find a way to bring our generations together in the life of the church. I'm sorry, I'm a traditionalist about this. Church should make you uncomfortable sometimes. It shouldn't always it shouldn't always be a matter of what you like and what makes you feel good and what gets your praise on and all that stuff. Sometimes you need to walk, you do need to walk out of church feeling bad. Sometimes you need to walk out of church feeling convicted. You know, we don't we don't people don't get convicted in our churches anymore. You know, and I and I agree with, with 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 my brother here too. Is that we have taken children, and we have, and, and there there are all kinds of reasons to you do youth ministry. Don't get me wrong, but we have taken our children and separated them out of the worship experience because they have become inconvenient. And so, and we they don't know how to be church. So, so I, I think you're experiencing with a larger with a larger movement. You know, if you go to you go to some mega, you know, and you talk about what you can see on television. Mm -hmm. Do you go to some mega church? I've been to some mega churches where you drop your kids off at the at the children's church, and they give you a little ticket with a number on it, and it, it'll scroll across the screen and say, "The the, the parents of child number ninety three, please come and pick up your child." How do we call that church? I mean, you know, I. Trust me, I wanted to go to sleep in church too, you know, when I was a kid. But but I knew that if I did, somebody was gonna hit That's me right. and push That's me right. and knock That's me, right. you know. The teaching of God's word in the black church is meant to foster strong community. Through centuries of torment, humiliation, degradation, and injustice, the traditions of the church have sustained blacks. The religious beliefs that developed during the late 19th century continue today, even as segregationist attitudes continue to erode. But scholars say there's more healing to be done. Even as it was 50 years ago when, when during the Civil Rights Movement, it's still the same today that 11 o'clock on Sunday morning is still the most segregated hour in the United States. Until we can get to the point where we actually can be on a level playing field, we're still going to be stuck with things like the black church. And, and that's not to say that we're not the church. I think what we really need to strive for, instead of obliterating diversity, is to say how can we recognize and embrace our diversity and our unity at the same time. Blacks have undeniably demonstrated their resiliency to overcome barriers of cultural oppression. In order to move forward, leaders say churches must move beyond regional, structural, and racial forces, even those which shaped the black church. 
bridging the gap between generations and keeping the church as vital to the community in the 21st century as it was hundreds of years ago will take forethought, but it can't be done without remembering the church's roots. The journey, melding the past with the future. That's why we sing Amazing Grace. This program on WTIU is made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.